This is the Pico NES project that I've recently worked on. The creator of this project has gone and released a Master System version using the Raspberry Pi Pico as well, but I'm going to use the Pico 2 for this build and try and minimise the build just a wee bit. But before we get stuck into the video, I want to introduce you to this video's sponsor, PCBWay. So whether you're a tinkerer like me, or a hobbyist in general, or even like a professional engineer, and you need something big for your next project, PCBWay is your one-stop shop for high-quality, affordable PCBs and a low, low mer. PCBWay specialises in precision PCB prototyping starting for just 5 bucks, but that is not all. They also offer services for small runs or full-scale productions, complete with component sourcing and soldering, so no matter how complex your design is, they've got you covered. PCBWay also offer 3D printing and CNC machining services, which allows you to create such things as like enclosures, mechanical parts, or even custom designs with materials like resin, metal, or plastic. So if you need your project done fast, PCBWay has a lightning fast turnaround times with prototypes ready in as little as 24 hours. So join thousands of creators and engineers who trust PCBWay. Visit the link in the description down below and let's get stuck into this video. So this isn't going to be your traditional um, kind of how to build guide video because this was kind of trial and error just to kind of follow the instructions on the website like I did much with the Pico NES. This one now is going to be the master system. So for this one I decided to use the Raspberry Pi Pico 2 which is the 2350 board I think it is and it's meant to just be a wee bit faster, I'm not entirely sure. But again I just wanted to see if it's going to be any different in power, uh, performance, anything like that and try and out the the master system because I feel like I didn't give Sega enough love on this channel. So the first thing we're going to need really is the Pico 2 obviously. Now I picked this up from Pi Hut in the UK. I'm also going to need this DVI breakout board. This is for uh, the Adafruit and the SD card reader which we're going to use to read the ROMs from the SD card. Now I built all this on the, the small green candy breadboard here. This was just to kind of see how big it was going to be and try and, try and condense it all into one board. Also going to need the NES controller port because we will be using that to control the games and the NES controller itself because it's the same button layout as the Master System. So what I'm doing here is just kind of placing everything on the board just to kind of see how the off it. And in this one I decided to orientate the Pico kind of vertically. I'm going to have it up, sitting up at an angle like this. I don't really think it's going to serve any other purpose. It's just to kind of have a different just for it to be different than the first one really. So I'm going to anchor the points in here to keep it vertical and then I'm going to flux all the points so it goes through the board so I can use the other side of the board for wiring later in the video. So that's the Raspberry Pi Pico installed vertically now, so I'm happy with this, it's secure. So what I'm going to do is tack in the, the standoffs for the DVI breakout board, and then I'm going to get that mounted on the breadboard next. Uh, for, for this I'm just going to tack in the board on each side just to kind of secure it in place. And then I'll go through each individual point again, just kind of making sure everything's flowed nicely through the board. The next thing is the SD card reader. Again, this is going to be pretty much the same thing. One thing I've done as well, as I didn't think I showed that in the video here, is I put electrical tape on the the metal parts that will be touching the breadboard, just because I'm not want to risk any shorts or anything like that. So once I've kind of put the standoffs through the SD card, much of the same, I'm going to tack it in place through the other side of the breadboard, and then I ended up cutting down the, the legs because they were just a wee bit too long. So I've cut them down, I've filed them in, and now I'm um, attached wires to the DVI breakout board. Now, this is going to be a bit of a spaghetti junction project again as well. I'm not trying to be anything 
you know, fantastic. I just want this basically to work and it's a homemade project, so I just it's going to look a bit rough. But I got the wires all kind of put into the, the DVI board and then I'm trying to think of the best way to run them through the run them to the Pico and then through the breadboard as well. And again, this is all just kind of trial and error stuff. So with the DVI board all wired then now I'm going to move over to the SD card. Now this is only 6 points again, I'm going to throw links and everything down below so you can follow it yourself. I do recommend following the wiring guides and everything like that that's on the website. That's what I followed and it's a lot clearer. Um, it's got GPI opens to uh, the ports, or sorry, the pins on the different breaker boards and everything like that. So I would recommend following that. This tutorial, or it's not even a tutorial, this video is more just a kind of look at what I've done. So that's the SD card reader wired in now as well, so the only thing we've got left to do is the NES controller port. Again, I'm going to throw links to the components and the, the build guide itself down below, so I recommend following that. Um, but again, we're just getting the NES controller port wired in and then we'll kind of give it a wee test. So one thing I've done before I kind of tested everything is I just kind of checked the continuity between a few of the points because I was kind of getting an SD card error issue, an SD card issue when I was testing it in between just to make sure it was wired up. So I was kind of made sure all the wires and all the points were solidly connected, which they were. So now we've got the NES controller port attached, all the good stuff, and we're going to power it through the Pico HDMI SD card and we should be good to go. It's not the prettiest looking thing, but I think it looks, I think it looks pretty cool. So we're going to find the right SD card. So I actually had a 512 megabyte SD card from the 3D printer that I recently got that had the update file on it. So I'm going to use that because the library isn't massive. One cool thing about this project, I will admit, is it's got the, the Master System, but it also has Game Gear. So I'm going to give the Game Gear some love, because again, I didn't think I'd give Sega enough do and enough coverage. And I'm going to test a few games here now on the Master System and on the Game Gear. And apologies now, my screen's a bit dirty, so I'm going to get a wee dust. And there we've got it, so it's much of the same as the Pico NES project, we've um, we've built it, it's working, it's all good to go. I am going to design a kind of basic 3D shell for it, just so it's not hanging out loose. And um, everything runs perfectly, you've got the different you've got the different kind of screen resolutions if you want scan lines and all that good stuff. There's no issue with performance that I've noted so far, but I've only tried a few games. Game Gear works fine, but it does take a wee kind of while for it to load up. 
Uh, but apart from that, look, it's absolutely fantastic. I actually love this thing. Uh, I'm just testing on this wee monitor here now with the NES controller. And I think I'm going to leave you here. I'm going to stop rambling. Guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you've done this project, please let me know down below. Or if you've done the Pico NES, let me know. I'm going to throw links to the, the guys' GitHub and everything down below. So do, do follow that. Give it a look. And um, I, I'm going to try and play Sonic again because it's been forever since I've played Sonic. But I'm going to wrap it here, guys. Thanks, man, for watching. Please think about liking, subscribing, commenting, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.